Saudi Arabia, mostly famous for fueling the world's disastrous fossil fuel habit and an appalling human rights record, says it is creating a futuristic green megacity. Here are the details. Saudi Arabia has begun construction on an eco-friendly, linear city, according to a Bloomberg interview with its chief executive, Nad Mial Nasser, who says it could be inhabitable by 2024. The idea is that the city, called The Line, will be the first part of a wider region-building project known as NEOM and will operate without cars, streets, and carbon emissions. Designs available on the city's website show three layers, a surface layer for pedestrians and two subterranean layers for transport and infrastructure. According to Dazeen, the city will consist of city modules linking the Red Sea coast with the northwest of Saudi Arabia to create the 100-mile or 170-kilometer long line. AI-driven transportation will be facilitated by massive data harnessing, and the city will ultimately be home to 1 million people, all living within a 5-minute walk of essential daily services such as schools, medical clinics, leisure facilities, and green spaces all powered by 100% clean energy. The broader project, which this is a part of, NEOM, was announced in 2017 and stretches into Jordan and Egypt, while all being completely powered by renewable energy. It will ultimately measure 10,230 square miles, and the 500 billion US dollars of funding for it will come from the Saudi government, its sovereign wealth fund and investors. One of the main goals behind NEOM is to diversify Saudi Arabia's economy in an attempt to move it beyond oil, with a megacity focusing on industries such as energy and water, biotechnology, food, advanced manufacturing and entertainment, according to Business Insider. However, plans to build five palaces in its massive business zone, plus hints at there being less conservative laws within the region, perhaps identify the class makeup of the project's target citizens. And while attempts to move away from fossil fuels should be welcomed, the accusation is that this whole project is a kind of slick greenwashing PR campaign, designed to wipe away human rights abuses reported by Amnesty International, such as the use of torture and punishment, massive restrictions on political protest, and huge discrimination against and ill treatment of women and migrant workers. Alternative living arrangements may well be required in order to counter and mitigate climate change then, but we should probably remind ourselves that other futuristic cities are available. For example, in 2019, Italian architectural firm Stefano Boeri Architetti unveiled design plans for a smart forest city in Cancun. According to the firm's website, the site would consist of 400 hectares of green space and feature public parks and private gardens. The smart forest city could contain green roofs and more than 200,000 trees that would be able to absorb approximately 116,000 tons of carbon dioxide. The company explained that the area would be surrounded by a ring of solar panels and agricultural fields to provide renewable energy and food for the city. The development's agricultural fields would be irrigated by a water channel connected to an underwater maritime pipe, and the site would use electric and semi-automatic vehicles instead of traditional vehicles for both residents and visitors. Visitors to the forest city would be required to leave their traditional vehicles at the city's outer edge. Not bad, huh? But there's more where that came from. In the same year as that design was released, a different Italian firm, Luca Curci Architects, proposed Vertical City, a project involving a self-sustaining zero-energy building that intends to house 25,000 people. The futuristic city proposes to be settled into the seabed close to the mainland, accessible by land, sea, and air. The cylindrical residential building would be clad in photovoltaic glazing, a technology that produces electricity from sunlight. The vertical city targets low poverty, no noise, no pollution, desalination of seawater, and producing 1,144,500 kilowatt hours of daily solar energy. According to Luca Curci Architects, the 750-meter tall residential skyscraper would consist of 10 modular layers, each layer consisting of 18 floors, including a mixture of homes, offices, stores, and other facilities. The building building would also offer more than 200,000 square meters of green space, which includes the public garden at the top of the building. In addition to the 25,000 people housed within the central residential tower, the vertical city as a whole, including the three adjacent towers that house offices, government departments, healthcare facilities, and educational institutions, would service over 100,000 people who would travel to the city for work, school, and medical care. Again, pretty cool, right? But again, it's not all there is to see, because some people don't just plan to stop at Earth when they plan their futuristic cities. SpaceX's Elon Musk plans to have established a functioning city on Mars by 2050. Musk has said in various news conferences that he plans to send two unmanned SpaceX starships to Mars during the next launch window, which would be in 2022. 
These first two autonomous cargo-carrying spacecraft will carry up to 100 tons of power, mining, and life support equipment. If this mission is successful, the plan is to use the next launch window in 2024 to send two starships with human pioneers and another two cargo-carrying starships. Musk said this first human mission would not be relaxing at all, as all future missions would depend on the success of what these pioneers can accomplish. These first Mars pioneers would have to deploy all the hardware, establish temporary survival shelters, and set up a rocket fuel production factory. Establishing this rocket fuel factory would be difficult under the harsh conditions, but it would be crucial, as it is the only guarantee for the astronauts to return home alive. The factory would use Mars's frozen water and carbon dioxide molecules that dominate the planet's very thin atmosphere to create methane and liquid oxygen, aka rocket fuel. If this very vital first human mission is successful, the next step would be to build more permanent habitats, greenhouses, and life support systems. After that, the plan is to focus on growth and rapid expansion from a village to a town to a full Martian city and eventually to multiple Martian cities. 2026 should then see the launch of a large number of human-carrying starships. Soon after that, Musk envisions seeing thousands of starships with thousands of people launched to Mars during every launch window. You are looking at one of the finalist designs of the latest Young Architects competition. The competition brief challenged young architects to create an eye-catching campus for the Hyperloop movement in the Mojave Desert in Nevada. The idea was to design a campus that would not only help advance one of the most futuristic means of transit, but would also serve as a sanctuary of science. The latest Young Architects competitions resulted in one of the most interesting conceptual buildings ever imagined. The competition challenged Young Architects to design a beautiful and practical desert-located campus for the Hyperloop movement. You are looking at the design of Begum Aidi Noglu, Mariana Custodio dos Santos, and Juan Carlos Naranjo. Unlike most buildings, which are usually a little more than rectangular blocks, this conceptual campus rises gradually and smoothly from the desert floor. The trio reimagined a seemingly inhospitable stretch of the Mojave Desert, North America's driest desert that stretches across four states, into an oasis. Their curvaceous Hyperloop test center is configured around four courtyards with water elements that support the growth of tall palm trees and other greenery. The looping building proposal is flanked by solar panel farms that generate renewable energy, while the courtyards are engineered for rainwater collection and gray water recycling. New Atlas reports, citing architecture firm Carlo Ratti Associati, that Helsinki has named the Helsinki Hot Heart Project as the winner of its Helsinki Energy Challenge. If the project does go ahead, it will be built in the ocean next to the city and will consist of an archipelago of 10 artificial islands built on top of huge water basins. Each basin will measure 225 meters in diameter and hold up to 10 million cubic meters of water. Energy drawn from wind, sunlight, and other renewable sources will power heat pumps that will heat water and pump it into the huge water basins. The tanks will act like a big thermal battery, storing the hot water until it's pumped into the city's heat distribution network as required. Additionally, thanks to all the heat being produced, four of the large islands will serve as recreational parks with pools and tropical forests installed. The idea is that these will be encased within a transparent dome and LED lighting, allowing locals to enjoy warm parks in the middle of winter. The idea was inspired by the Finnish ideal that everyone has the right to relax and enjoy nature. The Taiwanese city of Taichung has gotten a fancy new green structure. Singaporean architectural firm Woha has designed a sustainable mixed-use building called Sky Green in Taichung, Taiwan. According to the company's project website, the development features two towers with sky gardens and terraces filled with lush greenery. One of the tower's facades is lined with mesh screens with vegetation on it, while the other consists of balconies with plants and other flora. The first three floors of the structure includes retail stores, while the rest of the building consists of residential apartments stacked on top of one another. The tower's interior offers open spaces with green vegetation for residents to relax in. According to Arch Daily, the design of the structure was chosen to adapt to Taiwan's local culture and climate. Construction on the building was completed in November of 2019. Paris is preparing a treat for people who enjoy being surrounded by beautiful architecture and nature. Here's a look at the grand design. The city of Paris is famous for its beautiful architecture, urban design, and landscape architecture. This attention to intelligent design has made the city one of the top destinations for the world's richest tourists and their holiday spending. 
However, CNN reports that the city has now decided to spend $305 million to make the city even more beautiful. One of the most famous avenues in Paris, the Champs Elysees, is set for a facelift that will see it transformed into a green, pedestrian-friendly space. After Mayor Anne Hidalgo gave the go-ahead for a major renovation project, the thoroughfare, one of the world's most famous shopping streets, accommodates eight lanes of traffic as it runs between the Arc de Triomphe and the Place de la Concorde. Under the new plans, vehicle traffic will be reduced by half, while pedestrians will be able to enjoy wider sidewalks and more greenery. This means that the famous avenue will be transformed from a busy roadway into something that looks more like a spacious pedestrian mall filled with trees. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.